Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Kipe, and I will be moderating this uh, presentation. I am with Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar focuses on McEwen Mining, and McEwen Mining is here to provide you an update on their turnaround strategy at their various operations in North America and their opportunities in South America. It gives me great um, fortune to introduce you to Robert McEwen, who is the executive chairman of McEwen Mining, Peter Ma, who recently joined the company as the chief operating officer, and Sylvain Garrard, who is the VP of Exploration for McEwen Mining. To start off, we'll handle a few disclosures that I think are important. On the second page of the company presentation, uh, the company McEwen Mining provides you with their disclosures. From a Red Cloud perspective, I would like to highlight this, that this webinar is in, for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the partner situation or particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investing. Please see our most recent research located on our website uh, for the various companies that Red Cloud has under coverage. I'll turn the presentation over to Rob McEwen, who will start, and then uh, with contributions from both uh, Peter and Sylvain. So, Robert, Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pleasure to be here and to share our story with you. I'd like to start off by saying that last year, 2019, was a very difficult year for McEwen Mining for a number of reasons. The challenges we faced, one might almost say were biblical in proportion. Uh, we experienced a fire, then a flood at our Black Fox mine. Uh, at the end of the year, we saw a change in a geological model. And like everybody else today, we're experiencing um, disruptions due to COVID. A number of the events that happened in 19 I'm happy to say we're non-recurring, um, so they will not be uh, an event this year. But we are going through uh, some changes. We've made some large changes to management. Um, some of our operations are taking uh, longer to turn, but I do believe we have bottomed and are on the way leveling out and on the upswing. Uh, we have a, a number of properties. We have four mines in, and they are located in Canada, the United States, uh, Mexico and Argentina. A good organic uh, growth pipeline. And I'd like to get into the presentation. Uh, and I'll just say uh, there's a cautionary statement and really it boils down to if you're adverse to risk, don't buy our shares. It's a very simple message rather than having to read all of this. Um, we uh, looking at us, our, we have good real estate. We have this opportunity to grow organically with our development pipeline. Our exploration effort, and I've been a strong believer in exploration uh, since the time of building Gold Corp. Um, and this um, exploration has been, the success we've experienced in the last two years has been largely obscured by the operating challenges of last year. Um, the large insider ownership, and we're diversified by metal. We're, um, we produce gold and silver, and we have a large copper project. Uh, the challenges we face, uh, one, we have some debt that is short-term in nature. Uh, we're in the process of refinancing that, and that should be uh, concluded shortly. Our operational costs have been higher than we want, so we're working to lower those costs. And we're dealing, as I said, like everyone else, with the uncertainties 
due to COVID, uh, which mean reduced production levels as a result of closures, partial closures, and operating at less than full capacity. Our strategy has been to improve our operations, and, and that is, as I said, lowering costs, um, extending the mine life, and pushing on the exploration side. Here you get a sense of where our properties are located. Uh, you can see the mines listed on the left-hand side and the development projects on the right. Uh, the first three are connected with our black box mine in Clemens, that be the Froome, Gray Fox, and Stock. Um, our Mexican operation, uh, we have a feasibility study in draft form that will be released, released later this year. And down at the bottom of Argentina, in the province of uh, Santa Cruz, we have our San Jose mine. It's a joint venture with uh, Hoss Shield Mining of Lima, Peru. They are the 51% owner operator, we're 49%. It's a high grade silver gold mine. And then we have a very large copper deposit called Los Azules, it's about 30 billion pounds of copper. Um, it's a large property that is not owned by a major. Uh, we're looking for a joint venture partner at this time. So if you look at, our, I spoke of our development pipeline in Timmins, we have the Black Fox mine, which, and I'll call it the Black Fox mine and complex. We bought it in October of 2017. It had been a property that had been around for a while. It had frustrated a lot of its previous owners. We bought it, uh, I thought, at a very advantageous price compared to what the last owner paid. They paid $560 million, and that was comprised of $300 million of stock, $120 million of assumed liabilities, and then they proceeded to put $120 million in. So they were up to $560 million, and we paid $35 million for that property, and it consisted of two properties. On the, the mine property itself, there is the Froome deposit, which we're developing, and you'll hear more from Peter on that. And the Grace Rocks property, um, we believe that has the opportunity to be either an open pit or underground or both. And then on the second property, the stock property, uh, Sylvan's had great exploration success there that he'll speak about as well. We go to Nevada, we have our Gold Bar property that started production last year. Um, and it's been a bumpy ride. Um, just five miles south of it is the Gold Bar South property where we're exploring, and that would augment its uh, mine life, the Gold Bar mine life. And in Mexico, I mentioned the feasibility study, which will uh, come out later this year. So at this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Sylvan, our Senior Vice President of Exploration and he'll start off by speaking about our properties in Nevada. Thank you, Rob. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending. Uh, the first point I want to make is, um, is about the location, the quality location of our project. On this slide uh, in Nevada, you can see that Gold Bar is located uh, along the Cortez Strand to the southeast of, uh, of Barrick Large Gold Mines and gold system, including recent discovery intersections and, and, and open pit minimization. The, the old stroke is right. We have the right alteration, the right style of minimization, and, and the property remain under explore. So we see a, a significant uh, upside exploration potential there on the near mine and deeper uh, potential, deeper targets as well, both for oxide minimization and, and sulfide as well. Um, when we started our mining of Gold Peak, um, you know, that indicated lower grade and tonnage than expected. And uh, this led us to a, a revision of our resource model. Um, what you see on this slide there, the blue outline was the previous life of mine pit. And, and 
preliminary only, uh, shown in red or inside of the blue, are the revised um, pit scenario. Again, this is preliminary. This is nothing final yet. Um, you know, the main reason for that is that the previous model was considering mostly stratigraphic control of the mineralization, which is uh, partially correct. There is a stratigraphic control and also a structural control. The structure are the most important control of mineralization. So the revised model is putting uh, significantly more weight on the structural control versus the stratigraphic one. Um, <clears throat> you, you see also uh, on this slide um, the, the main structural trend, just to give an ID, and, and the mineral shapes that are shown there. Uh, this year, we went back into the pit and drill over the West Peak area. Uh, the goal of this drilling was to confirm and de-risking uh, in pit mineralization. This is where we'll be mining, and, and we are mining currently, and we'll be mining in the short term. Um, the results were positive. It's confirming significant mineralization over significant width. Um, it's also extending uh, under beneath the uh, revised pit. And there's even, as you can see on the southwest, uh, some minimization, some intersection, uh, suggesting potential extension uh, outside of the current pit um, at Gold Peak. Um, Gold Bar, it's a large land position. Uh, you see the scale there, that's a, a six kilometer scale bar. It's a district scale uh, property, actually extremely well located, as I mentioned. Two large faults, the wall fault, which is the uh, extension of the Cortez fault, across the property over the west side and on the east side, the Roberts Creek Fault. So a lot of immunization associated to those large structure. Uh, the upside is, is, is still a very good on extension of known deposits. So around the mine, what we call Minex at Gold Bar and also at Gold Bar South, which is a satellite deposit to the Southeast. Uh, and you see those uh, near mine potential within those red uh, oval outlines there. In blue, I'm showing there targets that we have at property scales. Uh, those are early stage targets, but uh, having the right criteria and also having a significant goal intersection. So we need to follow up on those targets um, and we will. And, and at district scale again, and the deeper uh, uh, type of targets that, that could lead to the game changer discovery that uh, we have seen with Barrick to the north is still open. Uh, over this large property, uh, there is only three holes uh, or three deep holes drill targeting the, the lower stratigraphy. So it's basically all open there at that. Um, now I'm, I'm looking at the um, uh, southeast over the uh, satellite gold bar south deposit. We've been drilling there last year. You see highlights of, of our drill results. Uh, the colored dots represent a grade by thickness of those drill intersections, um, which are significant in, in grade for this type of deposit and thickness as well. Uh, the good news about gold bar south, it's, it's of course proximal to our mine. And it's also um, very shallow uh, minimization come to surface. So we expect a very low strip ratio there. Um, and we see a quality satellite deposit to, to assist and contribute to gold bar. Uh, we are back drilling there, uh, targeting the north area. You see the red arrow to the north. It was only partially drilled. So there's a lot of room to infill there. The last fence of drilling to the south intersected significant minimization. So we uh, have completed last year program onto a positive note and open immunization to the south. We are back following on this and extending hopefully immunization further to the south. And, and we have been intersecting uh, higher grade immunization. And, and here we, we consider plus two gram as a significant grade. Um, and we've got up to intersection of up to six grams uh, in some of the holes. So we are following up on those intersection. There is a good stratigraphic and structural control there. Uh, we are doing oriented core to, to also improve the understanding. But uh, as I said, the significant uh, quality satellite deposit there at Global South. 
Uh, over to this, I'm, I'm moving to uh, Peter. Please uh, follow up on the, on the gold bar. All right. Thank you, Sylvain. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, the next two slides uh, will talk about uh, the past challenges at uh, Gold Bar with the startup and what the turnaround plan uh, high level will look like, which really is a, a back to basics plan. Um, in generally speaking, uh, things are going well uh, on the adjustments uh, after the reduction in, in resources and the development of the plan. And uh, as uh, Sylvain shared, uh, we are working hard to accelerate uh, the Gold Bar South project to bring forward uh, those ounces into the plan and compensate for the uh, lower resource that uh, we disclosed regarding the write down. Gold Bar South has actually entered the permitting uh, stage and uh, it was not included in the original feasibility. Um, Regarding uh, past challenges, uh, I think there were uh, a number of uh, uh, areas where we, we had a lot of challenges, but these certainly isn't a full inclusive list, but I, I think it's some of the most important ones. Um, one of the areas we, we had a lack of definition drilling and uh, internal grade control block model. Uh, since that time in the startup, we've drilled 15,000 uh, acres. Um, of drilling, diamond drilling, oriented core and RC and created our own internal block model. Um, past operators did not follow the feasibility study uh, or the mine plan. Uh, for example, uh, the cabin ore, which was very hot uh, clay ore uh, was supposed to be blended with the pick according to the feasibility and this was not done. Uh, and we had uh, an excessive amount of clay, too much clay really in our ore blend and that uh, affected pr production and it was exacerbated by uh, winter wet conditions. Um, to try and compensate that, the past management had pushed uh, tonnage to try and stack you know, more ounces and recover more, but you know, obviously with the high clay, that, that didn't work out well and the plant wasn't designed um, to, uh, to uh, actually uh, achieve uh, low throughput with, with a high clay blend. And this resulted in very inefficient mining, uh, excessive downtime uh, and maintenance, poor uh, control of our process and ultimately higher cost. Um, with the lack of drill information and, and grade control block modeling, clay modeling, um, the site became quite reactive to ore control um, and, and there was a lack of control of blast movement monitoring, which impacted our ability to um, properly classify, I think, or in waste re regarding the, the structural controls that um, Phil Van mentioned. Uh, we have to get a lot uh, finer on our detail of how to uh, control our ore. Um, and in an uh, overarching sense, uh, there were gaps in our organizational structure, our process of systems and asset management strategy. on to high level what the go forward looks like and a turnaround plan. Uh, we've restructured management and workforce uh, to align with the feasibility. Uh, we're at a, a overall workforce uh, count of uh, 70 people in line with the feasibility, as I said. Um, we've engaged a consultant to assist our team uh, with boots on the ground actually starting this week. Uh, they've been doing the review remotely, but they're on the ground this week for phase one, which will be an operational assessment of uh, our people process systems and asset management. They'll develop a roadmap, which will be the turnaround and ramp up plan. Um, that's targeted for completion end of July and uh, ready for a decision uh, to advance uh, a start, a restart and a ramp up beginning August. Um, as mentioned, we have a new resource uh, model and we're currently doing the pit optimizations. Uh, this model uh, also includes the clay model, which will help us uh, in terms of our mine planning and blending to do this farther out in advance so we're less reactive uh, and we can achieve uh, more steady state production and uh, management of our stockpile and, and all these good things that are uh, going to lead to better efficiencies through our ore handling system. 
um, as mentioned, when we pushed tonnage, that pressured the maintenance systems um, and spillage. And so we had to, you know, add a lot of uh, maintenance and cleanups uh, uh, persons to maintain the system. So it became very, uh, very inefficient solution. So uh, by improving our blend and getting in line with the feasibility, uh, we anticipate maintenance um, and spillage and, and everything to to reduce to uh, normal expected levels. Um, we, we are also uh, looking at improving our ore control and process control systems. Uh, regarding our ore control system, we actually didn't have a senior ore control uh, geologist or engineer dedicated to that role. And and uh, and we are in the active process of recruiting. That's one of the gaps and and uh, persons that uh, that I mentioned earlier in terms of organizational structure, process control. We've engaged Andrit to come in and look at our um, PLC and uh, advanced process control. Um, they will be boots on the ground uh, next week to develop that plan, uh, and that will be integrated uh, with the phase one and the phase two work uh, mentioned up above. In our restart, we anticipate the uh, ramp up to take six to nine months, and uh, and we believe that's a very achievable plan, and will enable us to implement all those improvements in areas I mentioned in a sustainable fashion. Um, that's it for the high level plan. Over to you, Silvan. Thank you, Peter. Um, moving on to uh, the southern Abitibi in Ontario, um, our projects are located east of the Timmins Camp along the Death Star Porcupine Falls. Um, both projects are located along the fault, and we control over 20 kilometers of cumulative strike length along the structure um, of over what we consider a prime segment of the, of the breaks of those structures, not just a position, but a prime po position along along the Destor Porcupine. And the reason why, uh, there's a few reasons. Uh, first, we have proven gold system at each project, um, and those systems are growing uh, as, as we keep exploring them. Um, there's major splay falls occurring and intersecting at each project. They are shown in red, dash line here on the slide. Uh, you see the one uh, coming out of the night out fault that intersect right at the position of the stock mine at the stock property and there's a split structure um, uh, at black fox occurring at black fox uh, that also controls significant mineralization so those play structure intersecting the break um, are considering uh, are considered as significant a structural uh, feature uh, that, that really uh, make those property well located, our prime segment of the break. And, um, you know, all the right exploration or geological criteria are present there. But uh, in addition to that, those properties remain under explore. Uh, if you compare to a, a camp like, like the Timmins camp, for example. So this provides a lot of offside potential. And this has been demonstrated by um, the, the amount of drill results and new discovery generated over the last two years, and also the, the resource grow that have been added to our project. And, and uh, to add to uh, all of those uh, positive uh, information and criteria, this is near infrastructure. We are along the roads, we are near our mill or near our mine at Black Fox. So great location. If, if you look at the larger scale and compare uh, our project to uh, other uh, orogenic Archean greenstone gold mine and system, those systems can go extremely deep, uh, kilometric depth, uh, sometimes up to one and, and even two and, and, and more kilometer depth. Uh, we are still shallow um, considering other uh, Archean gold camp. Uh, so we have a lot of offset potential, a lot of room to expand our immunization at shallow depth along strike and also at depth. So those systems are, are all open. Uh, looking at the Black Fox mine, this is a long section uh, of the Black Fox. 
uh, deposit. Um, our focus has been on extension of, of the deposit to the to the depth extension. Again, the, the same color applied to the gold meter. This is thickness by grade. Um, the deepest hole intersected high grade mineralization. This is the 232 gram per ton that you see at depth there over 0.9 meter. So the system is still there uh, and, and strong at those depths and, and, and uh, as it gets deeper. But one of our focus is on the west flank to the west of the Black Fox deposit. Very limited historical drilling there. The uh, development did not provide good access to drill uh, to the west. Uh, we've been pushing development. We've got better access. Uh, so we added uh, drilling to the west side of the mine. And, and we've got significant realization uh, and, and sometimes not just significant, but spectacular intersection is coming from there. Um, you see some, some of the uh, uh, results highlighted here. Uh, the black font or the, the recent 2020 uh, drill intersection, uh, 79 gram per ton over almost three meter. That's include almost 200 gram per ton over a meter. Um, also 40 grams over four meter, including 152 over a meter, uh, 776 gram per ton over almost three meter. That's include plus 2000 gram per ton uh, intersections over 0.9 meters. So this is Black Fox, uh, sometime uh, very high grade or, or spectacular grade. And, and this system uh, uh, extend to, to the West. Um, looking at the scale of the Black Fox property now, uh, two advanced stage uh, deposit, as, as mentioned by Rob and Peter, um, and, and Peter will talk in more detail about those. Uh, from deposit, 800 meter to the west of Black Fox, and 3.5 kilometer to the southeast, the, the uh, larger and growing uh, Gray Fox uh, gold deposit there. Uh, here it's uh, a table highlighting some of our best uh, drill intersection from 2019. Uh, it's coming from Gray Fox. Uh, you see uh, five different zones, um, part of the same Gray Fox gold system. Um, very good intersection when it comes to grade and thickness. Uh, Sometimes we get we get very high grade uh, intersection over narrow. Um, uh, thickness. This is associated to quartz carbonate breccia, breccia zones. Uh, there's a lot of those on the property. Um, and, and there's also a wider zone of mineralization still with decent grade occurring at intersections uh, of those structure and, and most favorable host rock uh, that we have there at Gray Fox. A few examples of, of high grade, sometimes we get 265, 260 over narrow width of uh, in order of one meter. Uh, but we also get good grades and good width, 10 grams over 13 meter, 11 grams over 19 meter, uh, 53 grams per ton over 7.4 meter. So those are, are, are what we are looking for. And, and we have all of this over the Gray Fox area. Um, here is a slide focus on Gray Fox, uh, same color, uh, gram per ton, we call uh, thickness and grade. Um, the new resource just recently updated um, and, and, and incorporating all of our recent drill results um, is estimated at uh, 888,000 ounces gold at the grade average grade of 7.1 gram per ton. Um, Gray Fox mineralized system is large. Uh, it's covering 1.5 by 1.5 kilometer, um, composed of five deposits that you see, uh, the names are there in the black boxes, uh, but five deposits, part of a large mineralized gold system. Uh, I get some uh, core photo to make things more interesting for, for um, I'm looking at the style of mineralization and looking at the at, at the style of the uh, of the gold uh, and the mineralization we are dealing with, um, there's a lot of visible gold at Gray Fox, as you can see in this core there, mostly hosted in mafic volcanic. Uh, there is um, uh, 
I mentioned a favorable unit uh, that is even hosting uh, more significant mineralization. This is a very realistic mafic flow, uh, but mineralization extended to all type of rocks, including sediment and also a cyanide intrusive. This is Gibson and uh, central center lower photo core photo there it's from gibson uh, again with visible gold into it um, a few more core photo there whiskey jack first time uh, included into the gray fox resource this year um, our last year program uh, really improved the understanding uh, we ended up drilling uh, what we understand to be the right um, uh, orientation across the, the, the controlling structure and, and we've got this spectacular intersection of 53 grams per ton over 7.4 meter uh, and this is close to through it um, we drill a good angle through the structure you can see in yellow the numbers this is the gold grade and gram meter very impressive grade over significant width and this is shallow as you can see here, this intersection is from 147 meter down hole. So very shallow. Another example, uh, this is an example of those blowout uh, occurring um, with, within the right or favorable uh, mafic uh, unit there, very thick uh, mafic flow. Um, almost 10 grams over 22 meter, that's include uh, high grade over six meter of close to 20 grams and and again you see by yourself uh the the grades uh, on the core uh over this this significant width there and moving now to the other projects we have and timmins part of the black fox complex called the stock property it was mostly dormant before uh, McEwen make the acquisition um and this is where the mill, our mill is located. Um, this is a high quality project and actually I've been delivering above expectations, I would say. We first started uh, to the east of the, of the old historical stock mine uh, over the stock east target, the drill on the stock mine itself, depth extension and, and move to the west where we've got quite successful. Uh, we've been focusing on a three kilometer uh, trend uh, along the mine, uh, west and east, but mineralization, and, and again, we are along the Destor Porcupine. We know that mineralization extends to the west because as shown on the slide, there is some good intersections um, within the property, uh, another three kilometer to the west. So a lot of room to keep adding and exploring uh, and making new discoveries at, at stock. Um, again, uh, from the three zones, very good intersection, sometimes very high grade and good width. And the stock west is showing even wider zone of musician in the order of tens of meter, 10 to 30 meter intersections at around five, six gram. Uh, over the stock east, we've got some of the best results coming near the end of the program. And the deepest hole on the property on the depth extension of the mine intersected up to 300 gram per ton gold. I'm looking now at the long section, looking north along the Destor Porcupine. Uh, this is a vertical long section. You see the, the old stock mine in the, in the center of the slide. We first start up our exploration to the east and quickly came to a first resource at stock east. Um, you see the results there. It's a, it's a low grade envelope of mineralization that hosts higher grade um, shoot uh, or shoot, we, 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 we call. Uh, you see some example and, and the piece of core there representing spectacular visible goal is this 64 grams over six meter. That's include another 300 gram plus over 1.2 meter. So this is not just a low grade uh, deposit. This is a low-grade deposit hosting high-grade uh, mineralized shoot. Um, moving now to the old stock mine, uh, we've been, uh, the system was open at depth. The mine have been mining relatively shallow depth. Uh, so we've been drilling on the depth extension to see if the system was open. We've got some success 
um, and, and we kept drilling deeper in our deepest intersection, as, a, 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 as I said, seven meter uh, averaging 27 grams and all including a very high grade of 311 grams over 0.6 meters. So system strongly open at depth uh, down to almost a kilometer. Uh, we've been uh, chasing uh, potential new shoots to the west and we had indication for that. Uh, moving to the west, um, we hit the new zone of minimization. This is a new old truck, uh, never drilled before, uh, coarse grain, ultra mafic intrusive, uh, hosting uh, this new uh, zone of minimization. Um, we've got, as I mentioned earlier, significant grade over significant width. Uh, grades is averaging around five gram per ton widths ranging from 15 to 20 meter um, the new discovery is open um, along strike and at depth and and our plan is to go back into it to infill to generate the first resource at stock west but also uh, drill the extension to assess the size of this um, the size potential of this new discovery um, Stock style of minimization, if you look for a comparative deposit uh, regarding uh, the, the old truck, the style of minimization would be Caradison, a very large uh, gold deposit in the ABCB. So we have the same, same type of host. We are along the major uh, deformation corridor, uh, and we have style of minimization uh, as well. Uh, hopefully, we will keep growing this, this new discovery with more drilling. Um, this is very consistent uh, wide zone of mineralization. As you can see here, some example of, of uh, our drilling at Stock West. Uh, the first hole shown is uh, six gram over 42 meter. Uh, and you can see the grid distribution through this intersection. Second hole shown there, 5.6 over 29 meter. Same type of things very consistent grade, including some portion with uh, quite significant higher grade uh, with 22, uh, 18, 12 gram per ton uh, near the contact there. And the last example, uh, intersection 7.7 .7 over 25 meter, again, including a, a higher grade core of 11 over 16. So this is, this is really good stuff. Um, looking at the rock, this is a good uh, example of what the intersection look like. Uh, disseminated sulfides, mostly sulf uh, pyrite over uh, the mineralized uh, intersections and a lot of quartz carbonate veining uh, and different generation of veins. As you can see on this, uh, you have multiple uh, mineralized events and, and uh, the, 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 the core photo with visible gold on it and the yellow circles are, are showing, uh, you know, visible gold coming from different type of veins. So this is an indication that uh, there is multiple mineralized events uh, over this uh, same uh, zone of mineralization. And this is a very positive criteria and this is contributing to the type of, of consistent continuous good grade that we have been seeing in those intersections. Over to Peter now. Thank you, Sylvain. Um, Black Fox uh, Complex represents a very exciting uh, growth and development project for McEwen Mining. Uh, we have a four block strategy uh, here, which I'll get into. Um, and, and the targets, uh, the business case targets are based on an existing uh, 1.5 million ounce measured and indicated uh, resource. Uh, our, we're targeting a, a production capacity of 100,000 ounces of gold per annum. And we intend to leverage the excess uh, mill capacity at our stock mill. Um, as mentioned, the four uh, blocks are, uh, if you look in the upper left quadrant, Black Fox Mine, that's our currently operating mine. Moving to the right, you'll see the Froom near-term development project. We're actually driving a twin decline there towards the ore. 
Uh, Gray Fox, uh, you've heard uh, the resource uh, growth, 888,000 ounce uh, re uh, indicated resource. This is our major growth uh, project and very high quality asset. And then uh, stock a little earlier in its uh, project development life cycle uh, is uh, another growth uh, story uh, for incremental amount of potential. Um, looking at Black Fox, uh, we've had a lot of challenges there as the past operators. As Rob mentioned, we had some biblical proportions of uh, fires and floods that prevented access to stoves. We've had all kinds of grade control and dilution challenges uh, and mine design challenges that, that lead into that. Uh, I think we've learned a lot. Uh, we're, we're in, uh, I think, back to basics applies very well um, to, to this mine. Um, in H1, we've uh, developed uh, access to 10 uh, mining areas. This is the first uh, for McEwen mining. Uh, and that will increase our mining flexibility and give us access to uh, get in and do the structural and lithological mapping and chipping uh, that will lead towards our uh, estimation of uh, resources and, and scope designs. We expect in H2 to resume uh, full production. Our, our, our development was, was on target and we, are, we have access to these areas now as I speak. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, throughout uh, the past year, we've uh, developed a new geological and structural models, which are helping our planning and design teams uh, look at the stopes and, and think further ahead on, on how to control um, grade and, and improve on our dilution. Uh, underground, in terms of uh, back to basics, the one of the key gaps in the past was uh, mapping and sampling, a lack of uh, mine-wide mapping and sampling. And we've embarked on a program which has combined uh, Sylvan's exploration team with our operations geology team uh, to focus initially on these first 10 mining areas to fully map all the old areas uh, and sample them. And, and we are finding uh, some new mineral mineralization areas and areas that were missed. Uh, so I think the, the story is yet to be told on Black Box. Uh, we need time to, to look uh, further at it and examine if there's any potential uh, beyond uh, next year for Black Box. Uh, this is where Froom comes in. As mentioned, we're developing towards Froom. I have a slide on that next. Uh, but it, it's a low cost transverse uh, open scope mining method, uh, about two to three years of production. Uh, fantastic uh, um, deposit, uh, dis you know, uh, disseminated type mineralization lends itself to bulk mining. This will provide time uh, to develop the, uh, uh, the Gray Fox um, project, but also allow us to get back into Black Fox and be uh, unencumbered by production to, for geology to relook at Black Fox. Moving into the bottom left corner, Gray Fox, this is growing into a long life quality core asset for us. Uh, we're currently uh, evaluating open pit and underground scenarios. Uh, there, the environmental baseline work has uh, started and we uh, intend on landing on a preferred business case by the end of this year. Uh, stock mine, we need more drilling there. Uh, we intend to do some more scoping study work around what we have right now. Uh, we're permitted to dewater the existing shaft, so we're evaluating re-entry through the existing shaft and you know, what that could do for us for exploration and are there potential or remnants uh, we could look at. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, future stock east and stock west um, exploration. So that's our four-block strategy. Just uh, talking from high level, uh, we're in independent re review on the FS. Feasibility. I uh, hope to release that in half two this year. Um, we are currently driving out of the Black Fox pit twin decline. We got 720 meters uh, to reach the deposit. Uh, there's a nice low ramp gradient, I think it's about 5%. So, again, I have a really good, efficient haul there. Um, we're achieving uh, actually better than plan uh, at eight meters per day, and we're uh, currently working with the contractor to improve on that. We think there's some opportunities to uh, do better there. Um, as mentioned, it's uh, disseminated mineralization and very suited for uh, productive uh, transverse bulk mining. And on top of that, we think there's some synergies with uh, Black Box. Um, the west flank extends up actually in towards that pit wall. We intend to drill it out of the decline and maybe in the future uh, access the west flank and uh, parts of uh, Black Box through the uh, shorter haulage route 
uh, of the firm B coins. Pass it on back to Rob. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'd like to talk about some of our other properties. Um, in Argentina, we have a, a very large copper deposit um, in all resources. Um, it's uh, about 30 billion pounds of copper. Um, you can see some of the um, intercepts in the lower right-hand corner of the slide. It's located right against the border with Chile, so in a very well-known copper district running the spine of South America. Um, we're in the process of de-risking the asset so that it becomes a more attractive um, property for a joint venture partner. Um, as you can see, this is from a PEA done in 2017 by Hatch Engineering. Um, it was using a $3 copper price. Um, so the CapEx 2.4 billion and a payback with a $3 copper price modeled at 3.6 years and a mine life running for 36 years. So quite an, um, an attractive project. Um, I'd like to now jump to the investment highlights of McEwen Mining. Um, as I said earlier on, we have four mines, diversified production of gold and silver with copper exposure. And we we're fortunate enough to have a pipeline of organic, organic growth uh, sources of production. Um, you heard ex the exploration update from Sylvan and there's there's some really good grades that are coming out of Timmins and out of Gold Bar South. Um, so that's what keeps me excited. When I was building Gold Corp, it was all about exploration and I felt when we bought Black Fox, it was located on a very prolific trend that had been producing gold for more than 100 years. And despite the money spent on it, there was a lot of areas on the property, packages that had not been explored. In the last two years, we've spent over $35 million exploring in that area and have generated some targets that you saw today, Gray Fox, the Stock West, um, even uh, looking at the Black Fox mine that a lot of people think has no future. Um, there's, there's shallow mines in an area where mines go twice or three times as deep as they current, as our properties are, um, and they've been delivering for a long time. Um, the company, McEwen Mining, has historically traded at a premium to the GDX, GDXJ, uh, has a high beta to gold at three to one. Um, we have, and but we lost a lot of it with the disappointing performance last year and our, our mandate is to fix that. We changed the management, we're changing the focus of uh, the operators where they were very much working on cost per ton, pushing rock. Um, when I built Gold Corp, it was all about cost per ounce and we have to get them thinking and we are getting them to think that way, that it's about mining at a profit. Um, Large insider ownership, I'm, I own 20% of the company. My cost base between the debt that I provide the company and equity is 165 million and at the current price, it's about, the, price, the current price is about half of what I paid for it. So I'd like to more than recover that. Uh, we are a turnaround. Um, we've been sliding. We had a write-off of $83 million in the first quarter. Uh, we got a major body blow when the company that did our geological modeling, that was the basis for our gold bar feasibility study, uh, changed uh, from when we built the mine and what they gave us. A company called SRK Consulting came along and said it's stratigraphically controlled. We built the mine and then a year later they're going, oh, it's not stratigraphically controlled, it's structurally controlled. So we've been scrambling to adjust to this new model that has reduced the tons and ounces of gold. The drilling has given greater confidence in the model, but it's 
given us a real headache. Um, so when I say we're a turnaround in progress, we're bottoming right now. Um, we're seeing good, um, how would I put it? We're, we're being encouraged by what we're seeing. And um, if we can execute this turnaround, which I believe we can, we've got significant room to catch up to the rest of the industry. Um, in here, you can just see on this chart how we have underperformed the market by a significant margin. And if you look over time, we have outperformed the market most of the time until, I guess, until the purchase of Blackhawk. And then some of the disappointments and some of the financings that were caused as a result of missing guidance. So I'm looking forward to uh, an improving share price, but it will take um, three to four quarters before you really see this turnaround coming into effect. So at this point, I'd like to open the session for questions. Andrew, over to you. Thanks very much, Rob. Um, thanks very much for the update. Uh, I've got a couple of questions that have been um, suggested by people in the audience. I guess the first thing is, is, is really getting to that turnaround strategy. Um, Rob, you've indicated that, that realistically investors should be thinking three to four quarters. But it does sound like we'll begin to see some of the, the evidence a little bit earlier than that. Uh, Peter, can you give us a sense of the time frame at, at Gold Bar, it sounds like in the third quarter of this year, some of the pieces will be in place that will start the progress on, on the turnaround. And I'm just wondering, as you look out over that next three to three to four quarters, how do you think that that's going to play out? When, when do you feel that in all likelihood we're going to start seeing that turnaround take place? Yeah. I we're really starting that process now, as you can probably see, uh, through the identification of the operational review and roadmap. Um, you know, we're, we've got six to nine months uh, for a restart. I think that's more than realistic. It's probably more than we need. Uh, the reason I'm putting it that far out is I want to make sure we get our people trained um, including frontline workers in the new way of working together to execute to establish our processes and systems so we're sustainable. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, what Rob's sharing is, is realistic and we're, we're obviously pushing to, uh, to go sooner. Um, that plan will be ready end of July and a decision to restart in August. I'm very confident of those dates. Uh, we have been doing quietly uh, with the standby dollars some uh, waste stripping and stacking uh, a little bit of ore each month to pay our bills while we work this out. So we're uh, we're ready uh, for the, the new updated mine plan to start executing in West Pick and have access to our ore as we speak. So I'm, I'm very, very encouraged by uh, what the team's been doing, the new team uh, and our consulting partners. Okay. And so then sometimes opportunities um, can be found on the expiration front when when operations have to have to um, take a back seat. It sounds like you've got an awful lot on the expiration front that is really quite encouraging, both um, in Nevada as well as as in um, in Ontario uh, on, along the Timmins trend. If you were going to rank the opportunities, you know, which are the two most important expiration opportunities within the portfolio? Where do you see the most upside that that you think you and your team is are going to be able to unearth over the next, say, 12 to, to 24 months? That's a very good question um, and not an easy one, because as you said, there's a lot of good opportunities we are dealing with and actually new discoveries. I will put first uh, StockWest. Uh, StockWest have been uh, a, a positive surprise. Uh, we were uh, expecting some success there, but the style of organization is new. Uh, it was never drilled, never taught, never recognized before. So it's, it's a new discovery. Uh, great thickness are, are excellent. This is close to our mill. Uh, again, on a, 
all infrastructure so and has a lot of potential to grow so we put i would put this one first and uh, gray fox come right after um similarly there we've been successful group you know it's a different story because we've been growing a discovery uh, already made uh, growing a, a resource significantly applying a new approach to the exploration over the specific deposit targeting structure that were uh, partially drilled in the past or recognized in the past so we've been targeting that with a high rate of success and we we made new discovery gibson came out as a first time in resource cyanide hosted west of the gray fox and to the north whiskey jack with really high grade spectacular intersection coming by at the end of our program there also new discovery and room to grow um i have to add gold bar gold bar it's nevada it's along the trend um, game changer can happen any day there with quality exploration on this type of, of, of gold projects. Um, so gold bar has room to uh, grow as additional oxide near pit, near deposit, but at property scale, we can come with a brand new discovery there as well. Great, great. And then Rob, on the financial footing of the company, um, there are a number of questions just really asking, where are you in the process of renegotiating debt and, and and talk to us a bit more about the financial strength of the company at this point in time. What are your challenges and what are your opportunities? Yes, thank you, Andrew. With respect to our debt, I'll just take you back in time. In two, August 2018, we took a to take out debt rather than equity to finance the completion of the gold bar mine, not wanting, we wanted to avoid dilution. And we looked at our projections and said, based on what we were seeing ahead at Gold Bar and Black Fox and Argentina, we should be fine servicing the debt and retiring it. Um, that didn't happen and that led us to do a couple of financings last year, uh, which were unfortunate because uh, they weren't done at the best prices. Uh, with respect to the debt, it's $50 million, so not a lot. Um, there are two creditors or lenders rather, there is my myself and another group. And the other group, um, right now, we're looking to replace them uh, with uh, a third party. And we hope to be announcing that very shortly that we've been able to refinance the debt, not change the dollar amount. Um, I'm, but we've extended it. We're hoping to extend the term by two years. Um, and take some of the pressure off the balance sheet. Um, as I said, we, we hope to complete that very shortly. Um, I've always looked at buying, one of my favorite areas of investing is buying distress. Um, when I was building Gold Corp, it was buying a company that was high cost, short life, bad labor. Um, and the Black Fox mine reminded me a lot of the Red Lake mine that became the star of gold core um, so in terms of our our balance sheet uh, we've utilized flow through funding for black box where you can get a premium to the market um, we're likely to think about that again because there's work we want to do at gray fox and stock west to bring that up to a higher level of confidence um, and I'd say our operations are starting to turn, but uh, we're still in, a, in that workout period. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Great. Thank you for that uh, candid response. Look, um, there's quite a number of questions also on Los Azules. It's embedded in your portfolio. It has huge copper optionality in a, in a honestly, in a world where copper deposits are increasingly a scarcity. How much more money do you think it's going to take or what type of commitment do you think it will take to really get that project to a level where you can begin thinking about um, opportunities for, for McEwen Mining? Los Azules is one of those properties, one of, one of my favorites, just because of its size. It's so large relative to uh, our other assets. Um, it also comes with a very high price tag. 
So we've been looking to see if we could de-risk the project. And by de-risking it, I mean, can you get uh, better access? The property is currently um, right against, well, we're not going to change the geographic area. It's right against the border with Chile in northern Argentina. But access to the property is difficult. You need to go over two mountain passes, which in the winter get filled with snow. And there's hairpin turns all the way up and all the way down at these passes. So we um, believe we found a route that we would have to construct that would give us access, not four months of the year, which is the current, but 12 months of the year. And that would clearly open up opportunities for others to get this because it would mean a much lower cost for development um, and, and, and a much shorter period of time for uh, development. We've also looked on the Chilean side and have a route out to the Pacific mapped out and looked at uh, an option on a warehouse there that would store the product. Um, we've had conversations with one large base metal company that didn't come to fruition. And they had too much flexibility, I thought, in their um, proposal to go forward. But as the copper price rises and look out in the world and see the electrification taking place in transportation and, and the urbanization that's continuing to run quickly in southeastern Asia. Copper is going to be in high demand and as you said there, there are not a lot of big copper projects out there that are ready for development. There's a lot of copper projects or mines that need a lot of, co a lot of capital to continue right now the current output so we think we're in a good position and all it is is trying to make it more attractive to uh, get a joint venture partner that will give us some capital up and we uh, continue with an involvement in the property thanks and uh, i don't think a presentation by McEwen mining would go um unfinished without asking you rob on your outlook for gold we've seen a uh, really constructive move in the gold price. They're good, solid fundamentals. You know, how high do you think the gold price can get in the next 12 to 18 months? I think there's a good chance to go much higher. Uh, all the reasons you'd be buying gold, looking at debt levels, um, looking at monetary expansion, they're all here in, in, in abundance. If you, you look at the response of governments around the world to the COVID crisis. They all opened up, got their central banks printing money over time. They promised all sorts of compensation to people who had to close down their businesses, people who are out of work. Somewhere along the way, that's people are going to reflect that that's the purchasing power of their, the currencies in their wallet is going to be much diminished. Um, and history is replete with all sorts of examples of when governments in their largesse try to support the economy in a major crisis. That uh, hard assets and precious metals being one of them, gold particularly, move up in price. Um, so time frames are difficult. I, I, know I, had, a, I had a number um, in 2000. I said, well, in 2011, we'll get to 2000. By the end of 2011, we get to $2,000. And it got up to 1920, and then it fell away. Um, but I do think you're going to see it, it's, it's ultimately going to go well beyond 2000. I think $5,000 is not unreasonable. Um, that might be three or four years away. But in the interim, you're going to see a lot of activity in the mining space and as we were talking about earlier on the junior space has been experiencing there have been discoveries that have been catching the eye of investors um, you know eight months of a discovery most people are pretty blase about it it was like pushing a string but right now you're seeing some big moves and that's why i think distress situations like McEwen mining 
could deliver surprisingly large returns in a period in a rising gold market with a turnaround. A perfect way to end this presentation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, on behalf of Red Cloud Securities, uh, thank you very much for spending this hour with us and uh, the investors on the line and really providing a good solid update on McEwen Mining and, and the turnaround strategy that, that is in its infancy and provides a significant opportunity as, as the company executes. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you to Red Cloud. Fair enough.